shit, we're doing a show. Oh my! That's the first time I've ever opened the show with a, with a profanity. The first word of the show. That can't be a first. Oh shit! Hey shit! We're doing a show. Shit! We're doing a show. But well, it is what it is at this point. It's a Twins Tuesday. I wasn't quite ready for that. I was sitting here just talking about all the cool places you can do a podcast. Podcast. It's, it's different than radio. You know, you don't need the fancy ISDN lines and the the, the the equipment. I mean, you could do a show. You know, in a biffy, you could do a show on a pontoon boat in the middle of the lake, which would be preferable. The, the to, lake to, is definitely over yeah. the biffy. Yeah, those weren't exactly neck and neck at the <laughs> at the wire, were they? I mean, but uh, you can you can you know sit sit uh, you know sit and watch the Boombalotti's walking by at Calhoun, you know, down at one of the Jones Beach or whatever. Is it Jones Beach or Thomas Beach? Whatever the whatever. I, I don't beaches. know. I'm not familiar. It, well, I mean, there's beaches all over the place, but if you swim in that lake, good luck to you. I mean, you, get, you go home scratching and itching and rashing out and shit. I mean, they close it down for reasons. <laughs> That's I mean, true. Yeah, it gets a little. Don't they ever, basically every year have to close it? I feel of, like they do always close Calhoun. Because it's, yeah. it's got poop. I mean, there's like human waste in yep. the lake, right? Yep. Yeah, it's that's disgusting. what it is. It's, well, it's Colorado. It's fun to it's, walk it's, around and look at the chicks, but yeah. do not go in. Yeah, no, we're not going to do a show as we look, frolic in the, in the surf. I mean, we're going to do a show, you know, on the outskirts, on, the, on, on a walking path, or maybe from that that fish joint, the shack there. That oh, what is that called? Stella's. Yeah, I know. Yeah, Stella's, yeah. Well, Stella's right? No, 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 that, that 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 fish place they got they've got they've got a like a poor man's version of that at Calhoun as well. Yeah, I can't. You know, you, 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 don't, you know what I'm out. talking about though, right? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's always like a fucking unbelievable line. God, I'm like so profane today. But there's always a crazy, crazy line. Uh, usually, you know, the, the season has to start before we swear this much about the Twins. <laughs> but uh, you guys, um, my experts, uh, it is a Twins Tuesday. Ted Schwetzler, Brandon Warren uh, are here. Jason McGovern, as always. And um, I mean, let's just dive right in. The story of the week, uh, and it is about a few days old, at least at this point, but Alex Meyer sent down. Control problems, the biggest thing? Yeah, I think basically he just wasn't ready, and everybody gets all upset. You know, he's 25 years old, and you got to kind of sink or swim at that point. But with a guy where they got so much invested in him in terms of not only trading for him, but developmentally, you got a guy with a lot of moving parts in his delivery. You can't do anything that's going to undermine his future success uh, with the idea that you have to rush him along. I haven't seen him throw much. Is he funky? He's very uh, it's just because he's got for, such long. He's a legs of the ceiling. Okay. And so with all those elbows parts, and assholes. Yeah, that, basically. That's what Stella used to call that. He's all <laughs> elbows and assholes. Yeah, Stella, he's fantastic guy <laughs> there. Uh, yeah, so if he's not ready, the Twins are not going to rush him, and you know that's going to make people upset because they always want to. They got that new toy syndrome. They want to see the new guy in action. Yeah. But uh, well, they only got one spot. If they had three spots, maybe you push him. Yeah, guess what? The Twins know better than anybody else. Like everybody was upset. Trevor. Got held back. Everybody was upset that Kyle Gibson got held back, and they both got just plastered when they came up. Yeah, so yeah. who knows better than the Twins about and where you this don't guy mean is. drunk either? Yeah, right. I know what you mean. <laughs> who knows? Who knows better than the Twins where he is developmentally? Yeah. What do you think? If there, if there were three spots, would they have been a little more patient with him? Maybe giving him another week? Yeah, I think. At this point, you got to do what you got to do with him. I mean, there's nothing that he's going to gain by staying in Major League Camp at this point. You prepare him for the season. You let him know he's going to Rochester. You let him know he's got a shot to come up if he pitches well quickly and move on with it. I did hear um, Gene Glenn talking the other day, or actually I think today, about <clears throat> um, time he spent in the minors, and I think that probably is you know, kind of him talking off the cuff and it doesn't really mean as much as he maybe made it seem to mean, but he was comparing him to Trevor May saying that, you know, he's got about 90 less um, starts than May does in the minors. May came out of high school. Alex Meyer was drafted out of Kentucky. There's and, and dealt with injuries for significant amounts of time. So yeah. there's a difference there. But, you know, he, he puts it together for a month, month and a half here. Oh, sure. You're going to have injuries in the rotation. You're going to have Tommy Malone struggle or Mike Pelfrey or somebody. And, and then Pelfrey you have. good, by the way. Oh, he looks great. Seriously. Yep. It's and, about and, time. I mean, it's, he should be by And now. for that point right there, about time. For everyone that wants to hate on Mike Pelfrey, hate on Mike Pelfrey the starter. Right now, you don't know what Mike Pelfrey the reliever is. So if yeah. he turns out to be a good reliever, be happy about that. That five and a half million is a sunk cost. Get what you can out of the guy yep. at this point. With you, and, and everybody wants to look at May and Meyer as the same guy because of the statistics. You got the strikeouts and the walks, and they're big guys. Right handed power it, arm. Yeah, there's 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 no more similarities. So you, you got Meyer, who's got the the lean body, doesn't really have Bobby. the prototypical starter frame, and then you got uh, <laughs> I wish. and then you got the and then you got the uh, May, who's more of a sturdy built guy, kind of the guy that you think you could probably get two hundred innings out of. So I, it's, the the com the comparisons kind of have to end with their stats and uh you know they just they're not the same pitcher so you can't put them on the same developmental curve before you consider that one was a high school guy and one was a college guy who, and uh you're supposed to be a little more polished Future reference but, when i throw the puppies and you're supposed to chuckle i mean you got sorry. it you just were a little slow on it but that's cool it's, it's a slow day today that's yeah. it now. and and you can even see that this spring i mean 
all three of us, I think, will be the first to say that spring training stats mean very little. But no, just yeah, just right. the you're fact right. that the process is going so different. I mean, look at how Trevor May has looked this spring compared to how Alex Meyer looked. Mm-hmm. Trevor May comes in and pitches competently. Alex Meyer comes in and walks three guys and strikes out the next three. That's not going to happen yeah. at the major league level. Well, you know I mean, as well as I do. They, they go down there, and they're, they're looking, number one, to see what kind of work you're putting in or what kind of work you did put in uh, in the offseason. As a matter of fact, we'll get to this uh, shortly. But uh, uh, Molitor, I, I don't know that I've seen a manager praise somebody's work and work ethic more than Molitor has with Plouffe, and we'll get to that. Uh, I mean, he's, he's using you know, like outlandish adjectives to describe how this guy's worked, which is fantastic. But I mean, I, I mean it's, for a month, I mean, you guys, you probably don't remember Junior Ortiz. You guys I sometimes forget how young you guys are. But I always joke about Junior Ortiz because you know, he, was, he was the backup catcher in you know, the 91 World Champions and a, a defensive specialist, fantastic catcher, great handler of pitchers. Uh, he, uh, as a matter of fact, I believe he became uh, Erickson's designated catcher. Yeah, I was catcher. about to say that. Isn't he wasn't Erickson's. Yeah. Kind of like the Maddox. With, Except, uh, I mean, Harper didn't handle guys real well. Harper was a bat, and they found a spot for him. You know, I mean, and, and, I mean he, he, he caught before he came here. But some, I mean, basically, Brian Harper was a guy who could just flat out hit. And so somebody found a spot for him. I mean, he, he had a decent arm, but he wasn't a handler of pitchers. He didn't think a great game. Uh, so, so, so that's what Ortiz's role was. But Ortiz couldn't hit his way out of a paper bag. He had just a horrible hack. And he, uh, you know, for, for, for the bulk of 91, he was hitting 400 because he just, I mean, he would hit shit off the fist that would just bleed or dribble. I mean, he just found spots. And, I mean, he didn't hit a ball. I mean, I mean, we get to the All-Star break, and the guy's hovering around 400. His nickname was Ted. I mean, they started calling him Ted for Ted Williams. He was hitting 400 or hovering around 400. He hadn't, he hadn't hit a ball on the money. So, I mean, you could go to spring training, I mean, to, to, to your point. And you could, you know, throw the shit out of the ball, and people could just hit bleeders on you, and your numbers could look awful. But if, I mean, if if, if the, the brain trust, you know, if they're sitting there watching you, and they, they they they've seen how you put in the work, they see you throw on the side, they know you're humping it to 95 and changing speeds and going in and out and keeping people off balance, and you're getting all, you're, you're bad luck. They don't give a crap what your numbers are, and you could go down there and you could hit bleeders and bloops and dinks and duck farts all over the place for a crazy average, but they don't give a damn. If you're not getting good, they want to see you get good at bats, good swings. They want to see a guy who's going to work a count, who's going to, who's, 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 who's going to you know, try to, you know, like, like Maurer when Maurer actually cares. I mean, like when he's really engaged. It's process versus results, yeah, really, is absolutely. what it breaks down absolutely. to. Process well, and it. behind the scenes a million times more than results on paper because okay, so they're not indicative. Who's leading the, 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 uh, the race for that fifth spot? I mean, he's Tommy Malone, if you ask me. Yeah, that's a safe pick. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I mean, he's got the least upside out of everybody, though, don't you think? But he's, I mean, he's the safe, the safe pick. Yeah, out of camp. I'm, I'm thinking though. I'm surprised I haven't seen more comparisons to Scott Diamond for him. He's, he's not really like Scott Diamond, but it, you know, people always want to have that comparison, that that safe feeling, you know. But Malone, he's a fly ball guy uh, around the strike zone. Like, so he doesn't get the ground balls like Diamond did, and that's how he's different. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the fly ball guy no, at target field. No, especially a lefty, because then yeah, you're going to neutralize yeah. the lefty power. Uh, which is the easiest way to hit it out of that park, except if you're a righty like Dozier who pulls it down the line. But, I mean, the, the stadium was built for yeah, like, it, the Jim Tomies of the world. I mean, exactly. lefties who got that left center stroke, but yeah, uh, so, not, so not a lot of those. Malone is safe because he's got a career area under four, and he's got some innings under his belt in Oakland. And they do have you know the acquisition cost. They did flip Sam Fold for him, so I, I think they are pressured to not only justify him, but you can go to the older guy and then and nudge him out with a kid. You can't do it the other way around. And so I think that they're, you know, they, they couldn't have May in there and then go to Malone, right? You know, two weeks later, a month later, whatever. You concur so, on Malone? I mean, you guys are together on this? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and and I think that um, Malone has the least amount of upside when you look at guys out of the pen. I think that you brought that up last week, Brandon. I mean, if if Malone's not a starter in this this Twins rotation, no he's in he's in Triple A or yeah. he's not on the he's well, not in the organization. Isn't that true for May too, though? I mean, May's a starter. I hope they don't dick with him. Oh, without a doubt. But, but he's he got can, the power to go to the bullpen right, and, he, and, and play he, Yeah, and he can go to Triple A. You're probably not going to send Malone to Triple A or Jettis. I think there's actually a rule that Jeremy Nygaard posted the other yeah, day. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, there's some little known rule where if they sent him down, he can in, like invoke a clause and opt out or something like that. So ah. they, they'd have to get his. Um, I think they have to get his permission or something. And the, the thing is. That's not happening. Look what he look at the stink no, he put up when the A's yeah. tried to send him down. And the A's had like seven good pitchers. The Twins just don't. Right. Well, and from Mike Pelfrey's standpoint, because I still see people that are, and excuse me if I'm over, but I, I don't. He's not a legitimate starter in this rotation configuration um, competition as it is. He's not. Right. He's going to the bullpen. Sorry, but he is. Right. And Malone doesn't have that option. You're not going to put a lefty in the bullpen that throws 85 miles an hour. It's right. not going to happen. Not when you already have Thielbar and Dunsing. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it, right. You're not going to have a guy come in and soft toss after somebody was just throwing heat. 
Pelfrey can get in there and pump it. To, I mean, to, I think it was yesterday he was throwing, and he was at 95, I mean, if, 96. If, if you do have a guy out there throwing 85, it's going to be a lefty specialist. But nonetheless, you've got, you just pointed out. Right, there's, you there's, already you've have got two. You've got two yeah. already. And, so. and you, you don't want to pay one point whatever million for a guy like that right. uh, when you could easily replace them with Logan Darnell or somebody from the minors. And that's why that's why I'm not even a fan of, of having Dunsing. Well, it's, but it's not totally by default, though. I mean, Malone's doing something during the job, isn't he? Oh, and yeah, he's yeah. looked good this I mean, spring. compared to how he pitched last year, and, and you know, you do have to – in some respect, look at how he's pitched statistically. But he, he looks competent. He's, he's not a guy that's going to strike out a guy in inning, and he's not going to break 90 with the fastball. But, you know, there's guys that do that and are good. Mark Burley comes especially, to mind. Especially lefties, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, you know, th- that doesn't play up in the bullpen. Uh, you know, he's obviously the kind of guy that can give you a different look every time. But he doesn't have that extra juice that's going to make him a real uh, special pitcher in short bursts. Whenever, whenever there was a soft toss and lefty going, whether it was, you know, a twin or an opponent, you know, whether it was you know, Alan Anderson for the twins or, you know, or whatever, you know, Tommy John. I was still fucking, I was a ball boy, and Tommy John was still fucking pitching. I like the night before that, the night before TK, what I would say, Jeff, you better go and get your rest. You know, because, you know, he says, you know, Tommy's going to be out there throwing that foo foo up there. He's going to be a little left handed. Because, I mean, I was, in the, I, was in the, I was in the left field fucking bullpen. So, I mean, the right, so, so it was going to be like a right handed heavy lineup jumping on soft shit from a lefty. So, Jeff, you better go and get some sleep tonight. <laughs> Were you in charge of, like, uh, protecting the guys in the bullpen? Yes. Yeah, Joe Carter almost killed me once. I mean, it fu- I, mean I was almost, yeah, are, I almost shit my pants. I mean, Joe the- Carter was, I mean, I, I don't remember who was pitching even. It was just a soft toss and lefty for the twins out of the pants. I'm garbage guy. You know, it was. It might have been uh, Larry Cassian. <laughs> was, <laughs> I remember that. But, guy. I mean, he's just up there just tossing shit, and I'm basically, I'm like five paces behind the third base coach. I mean, and if somebody gets around on that, it's fucking going. And I'm thinking to myself, they got to get somebody down here who knows what the. F- I mean, I'm just a dude. I mean, I played baseball, but I mean, fuck if if Joe Carter turns on something and hits a screamer. Although I was will it say, Toronto Joe Carter then or Cleveland Joe Carter? Uh, it, it was, well, it was Toronto uh, towards the end. But I mean, as a matter of fact, uh, Joe Carter. I want to say Joe Carter provided me with my greatest moment ever, though, because, you know, they build for the postseason. They build like an extra three rows of seats. Yeah, came yeah, right they, down. yeah. It used to be kind of like a little area in the bullpen that was kind of secluded. Yeah, dude, during the during the 91 World Series, Evander Holyfield sat like r- directly behind me. I mean, we were, everybody in the bullpen was getting him to sign, VIP sign status. baseball. Yeah. And Jeff turned around and knocked him out. But. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, he, he lipped off. I mean, he lipped <laughs> off. I mean, you just don't do that. Rules are rules. But uh, the, the, I, it was during a Toronto game. As a matter of fact, I think it was the one the one game we lost in the postseason in, in those two years. Uh, it was a day game, game two of the ninety one ALCS, and I think it was Joe Carter. But some, I mean, we are we are no longer sitting way down in the left field corner. We are sitting right behind the third base coach. As a matter of fact, they called up two guys from the minor leagues to sit and like guard the commissioner. Like the commissioner would sit, uh, like the American League commissioners in one side, and the fucking you know MLB commissioners in the over by the first base side. So I mean, they they called up like Brian Robbie, like to just sit there. And keep people from getting killed. I mean, you needed a glove. I mean, it, it, somebody hit the screaming, wicked, hooking liner. And again, we are right behind the third base coach. And everybody in the bullpen gets up and scrambles. So I can't see worth a shit. And I, at the last second, like, lunge. I, I'm a right-handed. <clears throat> so I got you know glove on the left hand. And I reach over. In, in, and, like, I just basically backhand the screaming liner, like, right in front of this, like, five-year-old kid. I mean, I kept him from getting smoked. I got, like, a standing up. It was like the... It was, like, the I just, it's hard to believe that I have enough coordination to pull that off. But it's like my shining moment, my one shining moment, to put it in March terms. So is there is there like video evidence of this? Yes, there, there is. is. There is. Because I got the 91 series. I might have to go find it's, it's, it. It's the 91 playoffs. You, you, you'll see the screaming liner. You'll see, you, you see the aftermath. You see me like scrambling. I'm, I'm like falling down. You don't actually see the ball enter my glove. But you, you see the, the guys in the bullpen like, all, like returning to the bullpen clapping and like me like laid out like just like <laughs> holding this this my glove in front of this kid it was a it was a it was a i'm gonna get a is ball it, so is is there an, i'm gonna get a ball is there a did te- you give the ball to the kid no he weren't a lot no i think i did <laughs> is there a te- technical term for that job uh, I, think ball it's like, boy. I mean like when you go you go protect like i thought we had a, a term for that like you go do this and it's called something i've never we, been told that there's a i mean okay. just, yeah, i've never been given it's never had a name as far as i was concerned but uh, i do remember also that another shiny moment we'll get back to the twins in a second this is about me right now <laughs> uh, the night that the 1987 series you know, Gladden and I, we had a little thing. I mean, he did with everybody. He played catcher, but we'd throw, you'd have to throw a breaking ball and try to hit him in the chest. 
And whoever was the left field umpire, because you get six umpires or seven umpires, whatever it is, for the fucking playoffs in the World Series. He came down and he was standing with me and he was watching me. I mean, I used to have a big fucking, it was actually more of a cut fastball. It just would float. It would just kind of go out and just kind of drift. So, I mean, I would, I mean, he's way out in left field. So I'm starting him out like, like literally like five to 10 feet out to his left and just would like drift right into him. And the fucking umpire was just dazzled by my stuff. I'm serious. He was, he was like, dude, that's a cutter. You got a nasty cutter. <laughs> like, Revolutionary before Mariano Rivera. Carl Willis actually had me, when I was playing catch with Carl Willis one day, he, 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 he stopped. He, he says, how are you fucking holding that? I want to know how you, and I showed him my grip, and then I threw him a couple more, and then he called Guthrie. It was, gut, gut, you got to come over here. And he had gut stand right behind him. I threw a few more, and he, then Guthrie walked over and says, how the fuck are you holding that? It was just a simple... It's basically a two-seamer, but it just went the other way. Because I, Future pitching coach Carl Willis but, getting advice from Puffy. But here's the thing. Yeah. Here's one thing, one thing I've noticed that. about a lot of pitchers they who have, who the have wrong funky guy. shit. You know, a lot of guys who have, like, funky shit, they have bad mechanics. I mean, I think a lot of guys discover stuff by accident. I mean, I, in all honesty. That's probably true. It's like yeah. Three Finger Brown back in the old days. He was, like, mangled hands, and he could throw yeah. the most wicked curveball yeah. you've ever seen because he had, like, three stumps. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, I mean, you, 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 like, like when, I, when I watch some guys, like, like anybody who throws any kind of sidearm or with any kind of funk, I mean, if they if they had proper mechanics, their ball wouldn't move. No, I mean, it's, 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 so it's just, sometimes people discover shit by accident. Is my point. I mean, I'm, I was no technician. Let's put it that way. But uh, let's take our first break. We'll come back. We're going to talk more about the starting rotation because, as I said last week, everything starts with the starting rotation. So I think most of our shows are going to start the same way because we have been talking all along about four spots being set. So we spent a lot of time talking about the one spot that was up for grabs. But I want to see if those first four spots are as solid and have looked as solid as they think they would going into spring training. We'll be right back. What are you drinking tonight, Jason? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason and Molly. I'm drinking the Lithbridge Hop Dish. It's pub talk from a Minnesotan perspective. I'm always really proud of where I'm from. I'm super proud of Minnesota, and I think Minneapolis is awesome. I think St. Paul is awesome. I think they're a really awesome cultural epicenter. With great local guests. So the other voice you hear in the room today is uh, Jerry Fagerberg from the City Pages talk about the uh, official Minnesota tall boy, which uh, your piece is on the cover of the City Pages. It is on the cover. came out today. Talking movies. All right, you saw Boyhood. I need to hear what you thought. Oh, man. Oh, man. (laughs) Wow. Sports. A guy who was undrafted knew what was coming. And everything else you talk about at the pub. Let's not pretend we know what we're talking about. Well, what do you think I do every show? The Minnesota Pubcast with Jason McGovern and Molly Burke. Listen at mnpubcast.com or subscribe on iTunes. We want to just find meaning in life. Hi, everybody. This is Alyssa. And this is Liz. And we're with The Focus Radio. Where our focus is to bring you resources to grow your business and double your income. Join us on Mondays from 3 to 4 p.m. Central Time. TheFocusRadio.com. Just open the beer. Just open the beer. This is it's like being in a ball game. Just open it up, you know. But seriously, these are like ball game kind of cups too. Center plate, man. It looks like the old center plate cups. Yeah, seriously. It's, it's like being in a ball game. Crack open the beer, pour the beer. Just don't be such a panty waste. Let's go. I mean, I'm over here drinking Coke. I mean, yeah, but you know, yesterday I come in here with a brand, not brand new, but brand new for me, brand new cell phone, a brand new MacBook, and as we open the show, I spilled the Coke on both of them. <laughs> that was I mean, fantastic. I mean, I, I mean, it was just a, it's a used MacBook, but it's brand new to me, and it's a great computer. And then this is actually brand new. It's like three it's days old. Almost early. poetic. And I mean, right away, Coke on both of them. I mean, so not you took Coke. it back to Apple and told them it was broken on no, the phone, no, right? No, I, no, I, I reacted quickly enough to. I think the phone took the brunt of it. Uh, are are we talking phone. about the first spill, the second spill, or the third spill? Yeah, because it was. It was spill, was, spill, that's spill, spill, spill. Try to clean yeah, up, spill well, more. It was. FEMA, FEMA came in. Good and times. They cleaned everything up. It was cool. All right, uh, the starting rotation. Uh, yeah, it's it, it's been maybe. I don't want to say I don't want to say it was too much of a foregone conclusion going in, but I mean everybody said you know there's four spots taken, and we understood that, and it makes sense. I mean you got you know Hughes is without a doubt the bell cow. I mean you, you, you had a breakout year from Gibson, 14 wins, and I mean that guy, you, you, that guy's been penciled in as a top of the rotation guy for years. Uh, you know, Nolasco is I, once healthy. I still believe this is a good. Did you see him in today? Horse. No, I did not. He threw. Five, I believe, struck out six, gave up one home run to Josh Donaldson, and it was roped, but he looked uh, yeah, great. Nice. And he's not really a strikeout guy. I mean, he's, he's kind no, of a sinker six baller. Six strikeouts I mean, he's, five innings is, yeah, he's, you'll take that every more, game. He's an economy. A lot more in Alaska, like, than uh, 
anything you saw last year. So that's that's progress. Okay, well, so, so so the four spots that that we talked about being nailed down as they headed in. I named three of the guys, but I mean Santana being the other. Yeah, obviously. of course, yeah. obviously. Um, I did actually draw a blank on it for a second there. And then when you whenever it says Santana, I still my first impulse Johan. is yes. That's, yep. that's sad, but you have to. I mean, it's just I it's I mean you know it sucks too. Is he went and he had that. What 130 pitch no hitter, and then he was fucked. It dead. sucks for him. God, yeah. you just dead. don't. There, I mean, there's reason people who bitch about pitch counts. I mean, there's just so many examples of why you don't. Well, and oh here's, here's the thing. Everybody says it didn't used to be that way. Guess what? When a guy hurt his arm back in the day, done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Fell off the. There was no Especially, rehab. You're well, finished. You can't throw 300 innings. You're finished. And by the way, did it, and it still is kind of that way with shoulder injuries. I mean, we sure. can we can fix elbows. I mean, we can go bionic on elbows. But you fuck up a shoulder, you are you are you're at death's door. Shoulder is like microfracture in basketball. Yeah. You, you can tear your ACL in basketball. That's like your elbow. Yep. But microfracture, you're done. You're, yeah. Finished. That's that's yep. shoulder for yep. you in yep. baseball. Is yep. my, you don't want to mess with the labrum or the rotator cuff, any of that shit. And you are in big big. And, big and, that's, and that's what happened to Santana. Labrum, right? Or, or yeah. cuff. Yeah. It was a shoulder. It was uh, not an elbow. I think it was two labrum. Yeah, injuries, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as you want to say that it doesn't matter about pitch counts and whatnot, think about how old Johan Santana is. Yeah. He's like 32, I think. Or At something. least. Yeah. Now he's 34, 35. Okay. Okay. But he has but a he's, but when he got he's, hurt. A, he's a heck of a lot younger, though, than you think of him when you think of his name and think how long ago he was a Cy Young yeah, he, winner. He hasn't pitched since he was 32, basically. I thought, right. I thought he had a long career ahead of him, though, because he yep. was going to always have to change it. And mean, good you know, pitch he, economy. He yeah. didn't have a high effort delivery. He looked like clean mechanic, so, you know, things happen. And, and, if if you've got a if you've got a differential a big a large variance between your fastball and your changeup it doesn't matter how hard the fastball is and you're it, effective yeah, yeah. 88 he, he, and 78 I, yeah i thought he'd be effective for a very long time it's too bad and he would have been if he would have stayed here by the yep. way they wouldn't have ever done that to him uh, no hitter be damned but anyway back to point uh, the four spots that that were quote locked up going in i mean you don't want to give away jobs but have the guys gone out there and, and, and done enough to, to earn what was actually given to them anyway? I, I've seen a lot actually today um, as the Twins. I think they released that they are going to have, and I might have my days wrong, but I think Malone is going on Thursday and May is going on Friday. Yeah, back, they're going back okay. to back. I don't remember the okay. order. Okay, and I would say I, I've seen quite a bit about I hope it's not decided on one start. I, I think that's true. It's, it's not decided Agreed. on one start. Agreed. But I think that as we go into Thursday and Friday – Malone probably has less to lose than Trevor May. Malone is probably penciled in right now as the fifth starter. If Malone goes and gets lit up for six runs, that doesn't necessarily mean he's not your fifth starter. I think that May would have to absolutely be lights out. Okay. Okay. To even get into the consideration. Well, how how, how do the top it, four look? Though? I think they already know. To 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 yeah, to, to segue I so terribly, too. I think they already know. Yeah. I, well, I they think... knew before camp started, but have they looked the part? Is Mike? Oh no, I mean, I mean, it was number five. They know. Oh, okay. I, I think they oh, already okay. know. My bad. As for the four, uh, I mean, they knew who the four were going in. Yeah, I mean, no, those were written in stone. No, I mean, I don't think. The but have they looked the part? Yeah, I think so. I mean, well, that's I, I think I think you've concern. seen. I think you've seen uh, what you need to see. I mean, obviously. Uh, there's been moments where you know Phil Hughes has gotten dusted up a little bit with home runs, and and that's what he'll do. And <laughs> we just had a light. We just had a light bulb moment here. Yeah, God, you're a continue, just continue. Uh, you know, <laughs> the, the guys have gotten dusted up at times, but that's just what you you know what you expect. None of these guys are aces that are gonna <laughs> gonna give you a strikeout inning in, in 200 innings or anything like that. So I think. I, I think they've showed you what you need to see. Uh, no, there's no. No, they've the, shown you. You're a writer, for God's sake. There, the there's no. They've shown you're you. You're distracting me here with the with the electrical tape. <laughs> that he can do color coding. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty there, there, there's no. There, there's no ace in the bunch. There's no ace in the lot. But everybody has looked. Yeah. Ab- about what you'd expect. Well, Hughes is an ace. I yeah. think Hughes is a legitimate ace. It, it, how he pitched last year. Yeah. 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 It, it, I mean, rate, it was a historic and season. Going, going to last year and. T- tipping off of you know being historic, I think. Well, the strikeout to walk ratio. Well, and, I mean, and was, where it's historic. come from, I think is you know kind of off the cuff and people noting that he's walked guys over spring. But l- let's kind of move on from that. He's going to walk more guys. This yes, year. there's no oh, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he, I, I think agree. that he is also going to be a better pitcher this year. Mm-hmm. He didn't walk hardly anybody last year, but he still had a pedestrian ERA. I mean, he was what three he, and a half, three four yeah, five, three and a half, three forty five. I think, and so. If he walks more guys, but lim- there was a run. I, I wrote a piece on it a couple months ago. There was a run in the middle of the season, right before the All Star break, where he had a couple games where I think he gave up between five and seven runs a game. Mm-hmm. You take out that portion of his season, and he's below three. He, hmm. he struggled out of the gates too. Yes, he did. Uh, so I mean, I mean, he looked like a Cy Young 
pitcher for portions of the season. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. When he was in the Yankees system, when he was coming up to the end, I mean, the Yankees have developed more talent than people give them credit for, by the way. They don't just buy. I mean, when they were when they were really good, you could go through their lineup and, 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 and you know, there were a lot of examples of like a Jeter or, you know, people that they had developed. Or, or at least at least people who played the game the right it's way. It's more damned recently. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's he's choking on his beer. The uh, uh, but uh, uh, I lost my chain of thought because he was choking. No, I, I, with you, but with all fairness, I, I think three forty five is better than pedestrian. In the American League, I think four is pedestrian. I guess, but but, but not it's, it's pedestrian. Not just to say, I think it wasn't it's elite. going to be better. In the well, three forty five is not elite. In the, cur- to, in to, the to current run environment too, you have to keep in mind we're we're, we're decidedly out of the steroid era and the after effects. And, and now the run environment we're in, like the average starter is a little bit lower too. Well, so, yeah. so I, I think I think you know three forty five is it's it's better than average, oh, but yeah. it may not be an ace. Most, well, most aces are better than that. But I, but I will say this: when uh, back to my point that I was trying to make, that uh, before I got sidetracked because I'm, I got ADD. Oh no, I forgot it again. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, when Phil Hughes was coming up to the Yankee system, he was considered. To, to be a front end starter. I mean, he's the guy that the. Tw- that, I mean, when 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 the Twins were shopping Santana, of uh, you know the packages that we looked at, the only thing that sounded any good to me was giving him the Yankees for something that included included Phil Hughes. I mean, because at the time, and I know that sometimes Yankee shit gets overhyped, and so I, you know I took that into consideration. But there wasn't anything in the Mets system that did a damn thing for me, uh, and it still I mean, doesn't now. No, but, but, <laughs> no. There was, but, but was there not some talk of Lester or, or not Lester, but uh, who was the outfield? Ellsbury. There was some talk of and like, Lowry. It was yeah, like it was like Ellsbury yeah, Lowry. Yeah, the, the, so the Red picture. Sox package was attractive, but I mean Phil Hughes. I mean the, the, the best thing that I heard, and again we don't know what was real and what wasn't. But if the, if it was real, there was a Yankee package that included Phil Hughes, and Phil Hughes was coming up, you know, through 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 the minor league system as a front end starter. So I mean this is a guy who was expected to be about what he was last year. I mean, and let's let's not forget that. I mean, as weird as it is, and as much of an excuse as it sounds like, Yankee Stadium fucks with people. I oh, mean, without, there, there are people who cannot well, a fly pick ball it. guy like Pavano. That too. Jesus Christ. Yeah, I mean, fly ball like a, is a launch pad. Oh fun, yeah, fun well, it's a about, terrible stadium. Fun but thing. I just about, mean the. I just mean the market. I mean that market messes with your head. Fun thing about Hughes is actually he was a first round pick the same year Ploof and Perkins were. So uh, they got that first round cornered in two thousand four yeah. with uh, with guys. They, it turns out like four picks that year. By but, the way, uh, that is, that is a god awful stadium. I mean, oh, it's a yeah. disgrace I to mean, the game. You, you I mean, look back at Alex Rodriguez would break bats and hit. Home runs to right center. Yeah, you look Just back. Garbage. At, you look back at Phil Hughes' numbers when when the Twins acquired him, and you say, "Oh, well, Phil Hughes was mediocre." But imagine if he was in if that Santana trade happens, and he's in the Twins yeah. system since then. Yeah. His well, numbers are nowhere near the same. You're playing, the, the Metrodome could have screwed with him. Well, too. true, but you're playing. But, I mean, but New York Yankee is a, Stadium is a crackerjack. It is. It I is. Mean, it is a joke. But I mean, the, the, it, 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 there's no denying it's 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 one of the, I think it's one of the worst stadiums of baseball. I think it's a disgrace. It's so easy to go out to right and right center. It's fucking embarrassing. Uh, but 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 I mean, the, 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 to more the point I was trying to make is. They're just people who can't be a Yankee. I mean, like Pavano pitched in the old Yankee Stadium, and he was a goddamn mess. I mean, he he was great with the Marlins. He beats the Yankees in the World Series. If you can't beat him, join him. So they go get him. They bring him, and he's terrible. You know, and he, he winds up going to Cleveland, being reasonably effective. We get him. He's lights out. I mean, just that, that being a Yankee fucks with people. And, well, and just to, be, to be completely fair, I mean— Especially with pressure and expectation. The, the Twins could—well, that, that aside— Which, which but Hughes sta- came up with. Stadium um, l- looking and expectations aside— you could almost go pull any guy that struggles with fly balls at Yankee Stadium and put him in target field, and he instantly yes. becomes a better oh, starter. Yes. Can you imagine I mean, the difference to right center between yeah. those two stadiums? Talk about the two. I mean, those are the two extremes. And right, that, that's right where, center at target field is almost unfair. And yeah. that's where his room for progress is too, is because his ERA last year was better on the road than at home. Oh, really? So I mean, there is there is room for progress there uh, to to improve in terms of how he pitched the target field. Hey, by the way, so, uh, of the guys who who were competing for that fifth spot, who who do you think is acclimating themselves best to the bullpen? You've talked about Pelfrey already a little bit. Is that is, is I mean, I mean, who, I mean, we need it. We need who's going to be who, who? Who's the eighth inning guy? I mean, you've got to have an eighth inning guy. Casey Casey I, yeah, it's Casey. Well, okay, okay, yeah. but okay. Who's the who, who's who's the next? Up? The next in line? Yeah, who's next in line? You know, it could be Pelfrey at some I, point. I, I think. Mean, I think when you say acclimating, I think the only reason I would say Pelfrey is because, like I said, I, he's I a veteran. That well, helps. I don't think May views himself as a bullpen guy yet, and the Twins mm-hmm. don't either. I mm-hmm. think that his option was either make the fifth starting spot or go back to AAA and come back up as a starter at some point. Whereas, or even through the bullpen, but as Pelfrey has pitched in this fifth man competition, it was either make the fifth starter spot or pitch in the bullpen. There is no option, I don't think, for Pelfrey to go back to I, I think the way it's going to work is out of the gates, it's going to be Stoffer just because he's a vet that's going to be out already. Oh, and the then, seventh, you think? And then like yeah. the sixth, seventh inning guy um, with, with Fiend and Perkins at the back end. But I think you're going to see a competition for emergence from either Pelfrey or J.R. Graham if he makes the team. And to to see if they can take the late inning role. I don't know. I mean, don't you? I, I know that you've been pretty 
tight on that. Don't you, it looks like I'd say 80, 85% Jared Graham is making this team. I, I get more and more convinced by the day. I really wish there was a way for Blaine Boyer to make the team too. I do too. Um, yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, I, I broke that down. He's basically the same exact pitcher as Dunsing. Ryan Dunsing yep. and, you know, cheaper. A um, little higher ceiling, more strikeouts, obviously coming off pitching in San Diego. But I think the guy that's keeping him out is the guy we we're talking about, though. I mean, if, if yeah. you take Pelfrey, you're not taking Blaine Boyer. So it's yeah. going to be Boyer or um, Pelfrey and Graham. Boyer or Graham or somebody like that. But and you I don't think wanna, Graham has that locked up. You don't want to send Graham back to Atlanta with how no. he's pitched. Well, so. you know when somebody's thrown really, really well? Yeah, you know what they say? He's throwing BBs. So Blaine Boyer's got a little edge. I mean, yeah, right, exactly. Thank you. That's so much exactly. fun. Right? He's, 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 it's too bad. He's he's actually a really nice pitcher, and he's a victim of the fact that San Diego's got like seven or eight future closers right now, mm. and they're just rolling. Th- th- that team is the National League version of the Rays. They put, pick like six, seven guys, and they just kill you with the bullpen. Mm. And and so they uh, they had a chance to take Boyer to arbitration for the last time, and they're like, nah, non-tender, done. And so you break down what he's done over the last couple of years and what Dunsing has done over the last couple of years, they're identical. And And the issue is... The Twins right now are so wound up in the idea that they they, they got to build a bullpen with their guys. And, and left-handers. Right. And so it's like they're going to battle with guys that feel safe. And you know the bullpen, you can't build a bullpen that way. Look at the Royals. Or the Royals' bullpen this year was phenomenal. There wasn't a single safe arm in that bullpen. It was all guys throwing gas. Mm-hmm. So, Brandon I mean, Finnegan was pitching in the College World Series two months before he did. Right, yeah. I mean, there, there's nothing safe about a good bullpen. <clears throat> and the Twins need to need to. Get with it. Hey, abrupt lane change and complete question out of just out of <laughs> left field because you mentioned you mentioned the Rays. I, I'm going to make a prediction here. John Madden is, is going to, to Joe Madden. <laughs> John, John Madden. Boom, boom. Joe, wow. Joe Madden. Joe Madden. Joe Madden. out there. Joe Madden's stock as a manager is going to plummet in the next two years. Nobody wins in Chicago. I'm telling you this right wow. now. I'm telling you right now. He is. He was not the elixir in Tampa. I think their I, their, their organizational philosophy was okay. was the was, are, the, was the elixir. But are they still going to be bad because they lost Friedman? Now you're really getting. And he, you know what he did? Now you're really going inside he, baseball. He went out and si- he went out and signed that that guy Oliveira today for more mo- like for more money than he had in his like 2013 Rays payroll. Can you imagine a guy like growing up poor and then they just hand you a big bank account and he's just throwing money at guys? It's I mean, just crazy. I, I've seen I've seen good managers and good baseball people go to that front office. I, 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 I just I don't I I think it's just as the I think death. the Rays, I think it's the death knell. I think I think Chicago is the death knell. As Anybody? much as much as I. And I hate not, the Cubs in the way that I love Theo. I like yeah, Joe, yeah. I, I mean, like, I love Danny McPhail. Andy McPhail couldn't do it. Right, I like right, good man. I like Joe Madden, and I think that man. I like it, Madden too, but I like, would say if it. he fails there, you're gonna fail anywhere. Well, that's because about, of how mu- the mu- as much talent as the Cubs. If he have, fails there, are people gonna start looking at it as a bad job? Uh, well, seriously, I the mean, Cubs have a coveted so job. Why? much talent? Well, they right just now. dicked over the last guy too and fired him basically. Yeah, when he, that uh, was terrible. When he was, you know, basically in. Uh, um, inked for multiple years and yeah, they we said, found someone better as sacrilegious it. as this is i mean i know they're not hurting for money they got i mean it's a fucking major market but do they have stadium issues i mean as sacrilegious as that sounds they just, just bowled over half of it didn't they yeah, i mean they're, 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 they're 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 what did they do they have problems well they uh they're 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 well okay yeah. but they have problems with Still. their with their uh neighbors I mean, there's they, only so much money you can get out of that stadium yeah i mean i mean revenue wise i mean there's only so much money you can get out of that there's merchandising that they'll probably be able to increase and that kind of thing too but you know it's it's a small park it's it's an intimate park and so it, it drives the ticket prices up, mean? basically. People are having sex in the bleachers? I mean, what does that mean? Just, it can mean whatever just, you want I'm it just, to mean. <laughs> well, no, all right. I just want to, I just want to throw that out right <laughs> into a break. So we can come back and change topics. Uh, we got some uh, some positional battles to talk about. And the, um, I don't say resurrection of Trevor Plouffe, because he never really went anywhere. But it just seems like every time he gets to a point where he's hanging by a thread or like it's, it's now or never, he always comes up with the now. And i got to give him some credit for that. We'll be right back. The Rusty Gatenby Review is the entertaining show about entertainment from movies, music, and more. Award-winning TV guy Rusty Gatenby and his review is the podcast with the biggest cast in entertainment, part of the Alive and Social Network. You can get that Minnesota connection to Hollywood and beyond any time of the day or night simply by clicking on the RustyGatenbyReview.com. That's the RustyGatenbyReview.com, part of the Alive and Social Network. Hi, I'm Terry Daniel, and I've been a voice actor in Minneapolis for over two decades now. How often are you getting compliments on your voice? Now is the time to do something about it. If you're interested in getting into voiceovers, please contact me via my website at universalvoicetalent.com. When I get to the bottom, I go back to the top of the slide. Where I stop and I turn and I go for a ride. Till I get 
All right, we're back. Quiz Tuesday. Put commercial free to the top. So settle in. Some ball talk. To the top. Well, that's what we call it. I know, I know. I just can't get rid it's, of it. It's an AM I, radio. I'm the same way. Yeah. I'm the same way. It, it is. It is. We'll it take is you up radio. to the top of the hour on this podcast that you started at you know, 623. I, I'm, I'm, you know what I'm proud of myself, though, is that I got out of the habit of giving the time. I mean, I got out of that habit pretty quickly. <laughs> that's I mean, that's completely useless. Yeah. I mean, even saying what day it is. It's Tuesday, by the way. <laughs> I don't give a fuck what Twins day it is. Twins Tuesday. Tuesday. It's, uh, yeah. Exactly. It's a title. You don't that's have to exactly. say it. It's a Twins Tuesday. It's implied. Yeah. I, 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 by text message today, invited Chad Abbott to Wild Wednesday. That I said, both. I thought to myself, wait a second. I didn't even tell him what day it is. Oh, wait a second. It's wow. Wild Wednesday. Uh, but anyway, I digress. Uh, back, Frequent, frequently you digress. I do. I do. It's, it's kind of my thing. It's kind of my move. Uh, Trevor Plouffe. Uh, Paul Molitor says, he, he, Trevor Plouffe showed, quote, unfailing desire to improve. Now, I mean, he's always been a bit of an awkward third baseman. Is this, is, I haven't had time to you know, dive into the articles. Is that what he's talking about? Is he talking about uh, more selective at the plate? Is he talking about better footwork in the field? Well, what, what, what was he talking and about? And we were, we were talking about off the air. It's like almost, you almost feel like you should be listening to Careless Whisper while you're reading those words. Like it's some Seriously. kind of sultry, yeah. silky vibe. You yeah, know? it really is. And, it's kind uh, of uncomfortable to even You know, read. last year he, he made some strides over at third base. His actions were better. His arm has always been strong. Um, you know, the glove is still a little bit stone. But, uh, yeah. you know, it's, there's a play the other day that was to his backhand side that he just kind of flubbed. And, uh, you know, he's still not. Corey Kosky over there. It's, it's a, to me, it was always a matter of instinct. Yeah. I mean, and I'll say this. Third base and shortstop are not the same position, but I will also say, if you can play shortstop, you should be able to play third base. I believe there, you, there's something different about it, but you should be able to make that move. If you can play short, you can play second or third, I think. Yeah, and, and here's the thing. It, they, they said, and, and when they were really having problems with him, I mean, like going back a couple of years, when he was really trying to acclimate to it, but back when I was on 1500, and you were there as well. <laughs> yes, I they, was. They were, they were talking about how, how he didn't have good instincts on ball, like, like a high chopper. He doesn't know to you know, back up and take it at a, at a room service hop, or if he needs to charge it and try to you know, pick it back. Backhand, and they just didn't have instincts on how to read things off the bat. Because I mean, you are playing up even with the bag. You're never behind the bag. You're even to the bag, or you're on the are in the grass. I mean, that's just those are the two places you play at third base. You never play deep anymore. But I, I did. It's just I I, th I think the instincts to uh, kick in more at third. At, at short, it's a little more of a heady position with with positioning and the thing. With third, yeah, third's it's in instinctive because right. you just hot smash off the bat. Uh, one you know, one step dive, one step right, all that. You yeah. know, you you just you got to have to basically. Read read things coming to you before they happen, and if you're not a heady player, you can't do that. Well, and they, they also heard that they had, they were, they, were, they couldn't get him to change gloves. I mean, uh, middle infielders wear small gloves. You know, you want to get the ball out, you got to turn the double play. Gaetti wore like an outfielder's glove. I mean, it was like pocket size. I mean, it was a massive. I mean, you've got all day when you when you get a hot smash to third, you you could take your glove off and take the ball, <laughs> set it down, take the ball out and throw it. I mean, you've got all day to get the ball. You can wear a big glove, but uh, I mean, originally, don't they have some trouble? I, I don't even. He still might wear a shortstop. Glove yeah, I, I I definitely remember they were really frustrated with him in a lot of ways because the, he just his acclimation was slow. And and the nice thing was that when uh, when all this stuff was going on. They were just so rancid that they had the chance to stick with him. If this is a team coming off a of 2010 where they were trying to acclimate Trevor Plouffe to third base or, or with regular playing time, it would have been a lot more difficult because it was such a good team. When you stink, you may as well give the first first round pick from a few years ago as many chances as possible. I mean, they did it with Parmalee too. I mean, who wanted to see any more of Chris Parmalee after last year? So you know, you just you keep running those first rounders out there, and uh, and and uh, luckily with Plouffe, it's stuck. Uh, and, wait, uh, Jeff, I want to touch on. Hey, something. Jason's here. I got. Hey. I got. Hey. Hey. It might. It might even be good. I don't know. Uh, but uh, I, you said that if you can play short, you can play third. But what I think you guys just all said. Well, well, you two. Sorry, Teddy, you haven't jumped in yet. But what you just said was that third base is almost more instinctual. It's not something that can be taught. It's something you either have or you don't. Right. Shortstop, you just have to have the speed. It's not necessarily a reaction time thing. It's more of a, ra a range thing, where third base is just reaction time. And can that be taught? Can Ploof get that? Or is that something that you just have or He don't couldn't play off? short either, so that's, yeah, why, well, yeah. that, that's where we yeah, are yeah, with yeah, this that argument. Point. That yeah. is a good point. I mean, you do make a point. I mean, shortstop is a weird position in and of itself, too. I mean, like there are guys who... I mean, there are different styles to playing shortstop. Like, uh, can't play the guys. I mean, the wizard they had, who he made all the great plays, but couldn't make the easy plays. Just Floramone. Yeah, Floramone. Yeah, I Flormone. mean, Floramone would take aggressive angles at balls, and he would. I mean, he would charge everything he could. I mean, he would throw off balance. I mean, he would. He would. He was he, fantastic. He, yeah, when he, he was. He was, right. he was. He was spectacular. And then how he did the Gagne. Uh, you know, back to my day is a guy who would, like, surround the ball. I mean, he'd almost take a route. So when he picks up the ball, he's, like, running towards first. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would circle it. And he had a great arm, too. But, uh, I mean, you, just, you, you do have different styles. I mean, there are guys who are real straight line playing shortstop and real aggressive. And then there are other guys 
who, like I said, will circle the ball and 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 and, 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 and maybe step back and take the room service hop instead of being kind of like a JJ Hardy too, who is a really good yeah, shortstop. Yeah, but you got to have the arm for He was it. slow. He was slow as heck. If, if you're going to if you're going to be the kind of guy who 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 who, who, who like circles the ball or or, or takes step back, you you got to have a gun. I mean, you oh, get, and JJ Hardy does. And, and, I mean, that's yeah. how Schwan Dunstan yeah. was when he. But, uh, I mean, I Jesus think, Christ, what, what, a pros- what a prospect! I oh, think Jesus. instincts too, like Jason's saying here, alluding at is I think instincts you're kind of forced into more than talent where you're pushed into it mm-hmm. instincts are you know how do you react to a situation rather rather than how can you respond to a situation it's mm-hmm. it's something you're forced into but something i kind of wonder with ploof and brandon i'm curious what you think it you know with them throwing ploof out there consistently because of being a bad team essentially as much as we hear sano isn't going to stick at third i wonder how much that figures into it too that well, if Snow's not going to stick at third, who's going to stick at third? Now, what are you going to do with them? I mean, are yeah. you going to make a Cabrera-like move with them? Yeah. Well, no. like or are you going to change, change Ploof? Are you going to make Ploof your left fielder, your first baseman? Or do you trade Ploof? Or uh, trade him, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean, how much does that factor th- into th- The thing about third base that is different than shortstop that I will grant is you can be... You can start out a bad defensive third base and become a good defensive third base. We saw it with Corey Koski. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, Corey Koski was really rough when he came up, and again, the team stunk when he came up. He was a and, goalie for yeah, God's and then sake. he and then he and then he rounded into Canada. perfect spot for him. You know, yeah, he's from Canada. Give him a break. He rounded into kind of like not quite Adrian Beltre, but no, a pretty good training is in July in Canada. You realize that? Right? <laughs> so he's a Gold Glove caliber third base, and he just happened to play behind Beltre when Beltre was with the Mariners. And unfortunately, he hurt himself defensively. I mean, right? Yeah, I mean, in he, Milwaukee, he, he fell over backwards basically, on a pop fly. And ended, ended his, career. his career. Yeah. Yeah, Very so sad. I mean, a shortstop, guy too. yeah, a great guy. Shortstop, you just if you're bad, you're bad. You don't you don't get better at shortstop. It's right. just, uh, you, it's, it's it's part of like this thing called defensive spectrum, where the toughest positions at the top, and you can basically tumble down the spectrum as you go through your career, like you've seen with Hunter. Yeah. he yeah. was a great center fielder. He was a poor center fielder. He was a great right fielder. He was a poor right fielder, sure. and now he's probably better off as a DH. You kind of fall off the ladder and hit rungs on the way yeah. down. Yeah. Shortstop is at the top of that ladder, and then like second base and third base are the next step down. It's about angles. It's about routes. Mm-hmm. You know, Brian Dozier mm-hmm. talked about moving from short to second, and how once he got the actions it's a down, completely different turn, completely different turn, shorter throws. I mean, the only long throw you make is now on the shift, which didn't even really exist when Dozier made that change. Right. So, it, but it's, it's a much harder turn, in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, you, you're, you're not looking at the guy coming. It's a corkscrew, it, yeah. and it's yeah, a corkscrew. Yeah, you know, it you're is. catching it and kind of. I mean, as a shortstop, you see the guy coming. Yeah. I mean, it's it's a and much, first base is in front of you. So yeah. there's there's yeah. nuances. I mean, nobody's ever going to tell you that two positions are exactly the same. But uh, it's just it's down the spectrum. So I, I would definitely give credit for third base being a little easier. But, I mean, if you've got the hand eye and the athletic ability to get to the major leagues playing shortstop, you you should be able to acclimate to to either yeah, second there, or third. There's a there's a curve there. I mean, that's why nobody ever looks embarrassing on a baseball. They're already such a good baseball player that if you threw Trevor Plouffe in center field, I mean, he might look bad, but he's not going to look embarrassing. Right. Like you, that, you know? Your yep. two best spots are center field and shortstop. Right. I mean, yep. you're not going to have a bat catcher. Well, cat- Catcher and, too, and, yeah. And, you, and unless you're really a slow, just tr- plodding big fat guy, you could play a corner outfield spot. Yeah, right. even big you, plodding fat guys who play. Chili Davis played right field for the Twins when they were in Atlanta. When they Chris Colabello the played right field. For it wasn't the bad. It wasn't bad. That, that, was, that was not good. He's not <laughs> bad either. But hey, he stood out there. So. Good guy, but oh, that was yeah, not good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, where's he now? Toronto. Toronto. Uh, I mean, yeah. he's got a really nice opposite field stroke. I mean, a really powerful right he, he center He just came stroke. into the game at the wrong time and the wrong age. But and... he's also got a giant hole in his swing. Right, yeah. I, I mean, mean, epic hole. But if, yeah. if anybody can fix him, Puppy. it's Toronto, you know. <laughs> but, I mean, so, <laughs> but he, he, uh, that, that right center stroke, you couldn't be in a worse stadium for a right-handed hitter with a right center stroke. I mean, you, he's, he did Yankee Stadium. He could he could hit well, 60. Well, and they're trying, to mean, fix, yeah. they're trying to fix Twins left. Liam Hendricks went against Twins today. Oh, I mean, Jesus. they're trying to fix. Yeah, yeah. Right. They there's... still got Valencia on their roster. Smoking lefties. Yeah. Liam Hendricks. I mean, that. I mean, talk about just a, the, the, the absolute perfect example if you need of AAA to know, stuff. If you need to know AAA why stuff. the Twins are going to be better this year than they have been in the last four, is because they don't have Liam Hendricks or oh. Cole DeVries and, and, and or anybody like Liam that. Liam Hendricks on is the yeah. is the poster child for. Somebody the Twins left in AAA too long and got bored. Because look at how his first couple runs in AAA went, and then the last one, his yeah. strikeouts dropped by like two, his ERA bumped up to like four. And you know, he said fringy stuff too, but it was the same time. It was just a guy that was never going to really cut it in the big leagues, and uh, the Twins didn't really push him that hard. Yeah, I mean, I remember talking to Molitor on, on the show back when I, again, reminiscing to the 1500 days, and he talked about Hendricks uh, that, you know, pretty, pretty bluntly that, you know, when you're in AAA and you can snap off a good slider and you throw 92 with movement, I mean, you could you could look really good. That's a four A guy. But but 92 at the bigs is is very hittable, even if it jumps. I mean, it's guy it better jump. If 92 doesn't jump, you're going to get killed. Uh, and and his, he had 92 with enough movement to look good at AAA, not enough 
for big league. Yeah, ninety two on a good day. I mean, yeah, I mean, and he, yeah, yeah, exactly. And I mean, he was he was just somebody who he's a perfect example of of AAA stuff. He just he was no matter how long they kept him at AAA, he was always going to be a fringe. Major well, he league. went like one and eleven with the Twins. Oh, so it, was, I think it was well, it got in his head after a while. I yeah, mean, I I mean, nobody's so one and eleven bad. I mean, if 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 you are one and eleven bad and they still hang on to you. There's, I mean, that, that tells you you're better than the record. Yeah, exactly. It's, it, it, the whole thing was a mess. Uh, uh, we've talked a little bit about about Snow and Bucks, and they get they get they get plenty of talk. They get plenty of chatter. Uh, let's, uh, you know, what we have to get to uh, the Dozier contract. That's 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 timely. That's that's a little more uh, uh, up to the minute. What's uh, what do you guys think of the extension? Uh, so, Brandon and I were talking about that in our break, and I like it. I think it makes sense. He's the best player on the team. You're, the, don't you think he's the best right now? The I mean, I think Maurer could come back and and, and be you know the, the cornerstone guy. All star. But right now, yeah. but right now, do you think Dozier is the best position player on this team? Yeah, yeah, that's fair. And I think you're betting on him, not necessarily getting better because, like Brandon said, I think he's topped out. But I I think that you're betting on him consistently staying where he's at, and mm-hmm. in doing so, the next four years you save money on arbitration. If he goes down in year three or year four, you don't have to spend what you may have had to spend in free agency because if you would have bought out those free agent years, you're going to have to spend a lot more than the Twins did. I mean, they got him at five million dollars for an average annual contract. That's less than they paid Mike Pelfrey on an average annual contract. So. It makes sense. Um, I get why you maybe wouldn't want to not have free agent years, but to to argue the argument of not having free agent years, you're expecting him to continually improve and at a significant rate. I, I don't know that that's going to happen. The the weird thing is that you know you talk about the options that there weren't any voidable team option years like a a Tampa Bay might have done now. The big well, the twins thing, are a little free and loose with spending these days. I mean, they they're not afraid. It, you know, everybody gets all upset about the spending. I don't think it's that big of an issue. Well, that's it, the thing. Who cares? There's no cap. Well, here's the other thing too. If they spent a whole pile of money and still stunk, where do you go from there? Well, then yeah. you've got bodies in that's positions true. you can't get rid of. Yep. So there, there's a certain curve to that. As far as Dozier goes, I, I don't think there's a, 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 a unreached ceiling. You know, obviously as a senior sign, fourth year college guy, he you know, fought like hell to get to the big leagues, and and here he is. Um, I don't think there's a big un, unreached ceiling for him. So they, they paid him a safe deal. The thing is, if he makes up good on his end of the bargain and you pay him commensurate with what he's value, valued at, aren't you going to want him longer than those four years? So like, to, to, to tack on some options might make some sense. Otherwise, you know, what are you afraid of? I mean, just go to arbitration with him for the next few years and let that play out too. So they, they went the safe route, and that's kind of what the Twins do. But at the same time, it, it just it was... If you wanted to do an edgy deal, if you really wanted to show him you wanted to keep him around, a couple team options on the back end, maybe at like ten and twelve million dollars, uh, easily voidable. You know, you'd throw five hundred thousand or a million bucks at him to void those options would have made a little more sense. But at the same time, you know, you don't want to lock him up into the mid thirties either. You know, he's I think it'd sure. be thirty one or thirty two when this deal's up. I think so, really what it breaks down to is that you put the risk on the the four years that you have him and and the risk on the back end is really on losing him more than it is on keeping him and if right? if you're willing to spend the money to keep him you just do it at yeah. that point at that point you could argue right now Brian Dozier is who he is in four years you will definitely know who Brian Without Dozier is doubt. and then you know what if he's a 15 million dollar a year player you just sign him to that deal you just yep. do it you just it does not matter like I, every, all these teams get so far ahead of themselves out thinking themselves like Elvis Andrews is starting a deal for the Rangers right now, right now it's eight years and like a hundred and some million dollars, and he was brutal last year. Right? I mean, you just get ahead of yourself. And for the people that want to bag on the Twins and payroll, like Jeff just said, it's an untapped cap. The, the yeah. Twins don't care. It doesn't matter. It's funny matter. because used to bitch that you didn't spend money. Now they bitch that you do right. spend money. Right? If he's or it's 15, not enough. Right? They, they want he, the Yankees. You know? Yeah. If he's a fifteen million dollar a year player when he turns thirty one and and hits free agency, you can afford to sign him for that. It doesn't matter. Well, and, and, and a middle infielder with power. I mean, that's, or, or yeah. you believe that Jorge Polanco will be there to help you, or Nick right. Gordon at you that point. You have plenty of fallback options. The Twins, if they have one thing in their minors, it's middle infielder. Well, it's in and outfielders. It's just that too, yeah. position players. They got position yeah. players. You know, I hadn't been following. I had not been following the, uh, the the Pinto situation very closely. I mean, it sounds sketchy. I mean, uh, on March twenty first, he got hit in the head on three swings, three separate swings from Adam Jones. And, yeah. I mean, I can't I'm believe they sure left him in what, there. Yeah, I'm not sure at what point you say, "Hey, are, is your head okay?" Yeah, I mean, the, 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 <laughs> it was the umpire had to step in. It was yeah. ridiculous after the third one, and he and, and Pinto says, "quote I don't remember it very well." Yeah, I, I know it was the third well, time. Well, well, and. He, 
consider the source. Well, okay, yeah. he is a goofball. I mean, a lot of Latin American players are goofballs. Not to be racist. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> but, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm telling you. I mean, I mean, but within no, within baseball circles, I mean, there are, are there are goof. I mean, people talk about, and this is going to sound a little sketchy, but I mean, and I'm not going to you know pin these names to individuals, but they're about lazy Latins or or loopy Latins or, or just you know, I mean, they're, they're guys who are just goofy. They like, play the game differently. They yes. just do. Well, I mean, you know, honestly, what are we four days away and. Is it four days or three days away from where he's been at being loopy? And now he's saying, you know, I'm good to go. I'm good to get back to, you know. He, yeah. I mean, and I'm not trying to, I mean, in all honesty, like if somebody grows up in a dirt floor shack in the Dominican Republic, he's got a different set of priorities than some guy who grows up in, in, in Mankato. I mean, he just does. I mean, and sometimes, you know, I've heard, I've heard baseball guys, I've heard people, you know, members of the Twins staff at, at different you know parts of the, in their history like question the you know the the gumption of certain latin players because it's like you know they they love the paycheck they got their family out of the dirt shack i mean they, 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 you know the world series well that'd be nice but you know what i got my paycheck i mean right and but not they're not, they're not not to pray with the broad stroke they're not all like that but yeah. i mean they're they're there are some latins you, you get, uh, latin american ball players who you got to reel them in from time to time you got to lock them in their concentration they just drift i mean they're just kind of they, they just seem goofy i mean obviously there are more that, 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 that these are the exceptions. The goofballs are the exceptions. I mean, the Mario and Rivera's. I mean, I mean that's how David Ortiz. David Ortiz was actually a little goofy doing it, doing his in his day. But, but I mean, and, and nonetheless, I mean, it's okay to have, to have you know to have some fun. I mean, Manny Ramirez, for God's sake. I mean, there, I mean, there are plenty. He's of poster goofy. child. Poster child. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, still goofy. Yeah, there are plenty yeah. of examples. I mean, uh, Jose Canseco. I mean, there, there's there's plenty of examples. Uh, Ruben Sierra, Rafael Palmero. I mean, I, I mean, there's <laughs> there's plenty. There's plenty. But uh, I mean, there. But again, then there are also the the, the focused professionals. Johan Santana. For, you know, fantastic focused professional baseball player, uh, but uh, uh, is, 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 is it going to be Suzuki and Pinto when we when they leave? Is, is that simple? Or assuming, assuming. Oh, what health. do they do with Herman? Where's Herman? I think, I think position that, wise, where's yeah, Herman now? I mean, he's and everywhere. He, and so last year the Twins were very very stout on saying, you know, he's, he's, he's an outfielder. Yeah. yeah, he's not an outfield. He's, not, he's, a outfield. Outfield. he's, not, he's a not a good outfielder. He's not a good outfielder. He's not a good outfielder. And I think that if Pinto is not back in the lineup by, I was looking at their schedule today. I think if he's not back by Monday, you start to worry. Yeah, I think. Well, has Herman caught it all in the in spring? Yeah, seven times or oh, eight times. Jesus. Yeah. yeah, so that's a so big I guess. think it's Herman. If Pinto's not back by Monday, I think they probably roll with Herman to start the year, and you might see Pinto in the first week. But I don't think he breaks. Her- you know, Her- Herman is the only, and I'm doing air quotes, uh, catcher on the 40 man roster besides those two. Right. So, yeah, so you, you know, you, you're not going to add Crazy. Fryer to to come up for two weeks. No. So and the other tough thing is, is what do you do with Pinto? Uh, you know, is he going to DH some? Is he going to just, he's not a prototypical backup catcher. So uh, there's, there's obviously some questions too about what, you know, if they send him to AAA and bring up Herman, who's probably a little more of, a, he's not necessarily a backup, but he's a, a lesser talent, someone you can justify sitting on the bench mm-hmm. to let Pinto catch every day in AAA. That sets a lot of different other things in motion in terms of who your backup outfielders are and all that kind of thing too. I think it's interesting too. You think about you know the the prototypical, even if it's the third or the backup catcher that the Twins have had in the Garden Hire era, it was Drew Buchera who had defensive acumen. Henry Blanco. Henry Blanco. There's, Pat Borders. There's nothing mm. that Pinto brings to the table as a catcher that Suzuki doesn't. Suzuki is not a good or great or even mediocre defensive catcher. He's not good at pitch framing. He doesn't throw a lot of guys out. Pinto's worse than that. Pinto's bat is what's supposed to get him into the majors. And if he's going to sit on the bench, his bat isn't playing anyway. So like Brandon's just saying, you know, if he's not getting DH at bats, he's not really valuable as a backup catcher. I think he could vulture plate appearances from Vargas. And that, you know, yep. Royce said the other day, don't be surprised if Vargas goes to AAA and they DH Eduardo. But Vargas Escobar. looks good right now. There's, there's some good reports. It's just said, a, that he's coming just around. Sounded like the worst idea I've ever heard to DH Eduardo. Eduardo Escobar, Escobar is the perfect utility man, even on yeah. a Twins yeah. team or a good team. Eduardo Escobar can play short, second, third, Out- and he can hit. Can he play outfield a little bit? Yeah, a little bit. Bit of pitch. He's a championship a caliber role player. Yes, he can hit. And that's something that the Twins, when they had Brendan Harris back in his heyday and Nick Punto, they Did couldn't he have a heyday. Well, yeah, no, well, Harris okay. had a little pop. Fair. He had a little pop. But Eduardo <laughs> Escobar, I mean, can, Eduardo Escobar can hit. If you get that back from Francisco Liriano, that is your typical utility man. That's why he's not your starting shortstop because Danny Santana, you have to let him try and hit, even if he regresses. He, 
Is yeah. Vargas going to make the team? Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think yeah, not a chance I think that was just uh, Uncle Pat just kind of pushing the buttons a little bit. Yeah, and he's no he's way. really good. He's really good at that. Uh, Escobar is good insurance to you at second in case Dozier has any kind yep. of fallback. Short if Santana does, and if Plouffe has anything, you know, he broke his arm at the end of the season last year, and obviously he hasn't hit righties as well in his career. You know, you can you can move some things around instead of having to push push the panic button and call up Polanco or Miguel Sano or anybody else at short, you have Escobar. I mean, it's, mm-hmm. it's and then there's that Nunez you can, behind him. Yeah, you from. can bridge again. I do wonder, as much as I've seen it come up lately, I wonder if Nunez makes a team. I'm not sure that that's not a necessary if, cut. They, I think that if Pinto stays injured, they may go with Chris Herman as that guy, as a utility guy that can play outfield and also back up catcher and keep Pinto on the roster and maybe cut Nunez. He only cost him, I think it was like 200 and some thousand. Yeah, you, I mean, he just, uh, he is, I watched the game yesterday. He is an awful infielder. He is terrible. He, he can't he, feel the short. He can't hit. I mean, he's awful. There's very he, little he, he brings. He, he was supposed to be the heir at, at, yeah, for at the short Yankees. for Derek Jeter. Yeah, it's been a rough go of it for uh, for yeah. Eddie. Hey, he's awful. A uh, closing point here as we're running short on time. Uh, reports on Aaron Hicks. What do you think? It's not easy. Is it? I, sink or swim, young man? I, yeah, I know. So, but he's got all the tools. I mean, he my, really does. My ideal scenario for Aaron, I think that the Twins go with Hicks out of the gate because you have to. You absolutely have to give him a chance to corroborate what he did in AA and AAA last year. My ideal scenario is he pushes Jordan Schaefer out. He has a good enough uh, beginning of the season that – Eddie Rosario gets called up and is your starting center fielder until Byron Buxton arrives. See, to me, Schaefer's a, a, a getaway day outfielder. Yep, yep. You know, he's a he's Sunday not, afternoon outfielder. He's not very good. No, no I mean, he's, he's a, a bad He's a speed guy yeah, and a defensive guy. Right. He's Terrence oh, he Gore on the Royals last year that comes in in September and steals bases for yeah, you. exactly. So if Aaron Hicks can play def- defense good enough and can come in and hit 220 to 250 That's all you want and be him, your huh? fourth outfielder and Eddie Rosario can start That's for all he'll you, give you. Huh, wow. You can cut Schaefer Negative. and and Very. move on, and I think, I think that's the ideal that's, that's, scenario. I think, I think well, like he was sitting like 170 when the Braves let him go. I mean, he was awful. He, oh, he I, thought you, no, I thought you were talking about Hicks. No, 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 no. Schaefer. Thought, Schaefer. When what? you said 220 to 250, yeah. I thought you were talking about Hicks. I'm like, oh, okay. really? Yeah. If Hicks hits 250, he will be a very good player because of defense Fourth, and because of walks. Oh, sure. oh, he yep. can chase it down, and and he can't do. Or Schaefer cannot give you what Hicks can. So He's not I, a very good center fielder. Well, you, no. you're gonna, what you saw from Hicks off... Well, but, or, uh, but Schaefer Schaefer can chase it down, can he? Yeah, I mean, not he's got weeks. He's, he's not a good defensive center fielder. He takes well, bad he has rounds. no arm. He takes bad, bad rounds, okay, too. Okay, okay. But well, I mean, if center field's going to be a tough spot. I mean, because you got you got two corner outfielders on this team that can't really run. And it's already a big and outfield. It's a big outfield. Yeah, they're, they're running no, in molasses right there's now. There's next yeah. to no way that Jordan Schaefer gives you what he did offensively last year. Not even close. Not a chance. More like September. Okay, so no Jordan rules. No Jordan rules on the Twins. All right. Well, that is week number two of Twins Tuesday. Week number two of, of what, 200, 300 we'll have to get through to get to the, to the season. We've done another hour. It's a grind. Not enough. Well, I'm telling you, baseball is a grind. We are going to have plenty of airtime. And, and, again, I do believe we're going to be out and about uh, as the season progresses. As a matter of fact, I hope you guys know how to get to Victoria. We might be at a place called Floyd's. But Love I it. I don't want to spill the. Are you Love a Western it. Suburbs guy? You're yeah, West- Plymouth. Perfect. Well, Victoria is fantastic. I used to I had owned a house in Plymouth. But I, I just my, my family's in Maple Grove. So nice. anyway, uh, for Ted, for Brandon, for I, Jason was here. I mean, you heard him briefly. I asked a question. We can I'm, prove it. He's got an alibi. I, I'm Jeff. This was Twins Tuesday.